So a very good evening and welcome along to the fourth uh, of our Ulster Whiskey exclusives. Uh, this is uh, four weeks we've, we've been in lockdown now for over two months. Uh, t- th- 12 weeks is it now? I don't know, something like that. It's it, we're, I'm, losing, I'm losing track of time, Marty. Uh, but we're, uh, we're here and we're raring to go. And uh, <laughs> people have been quick off the mark this week. Uh, Becky Watson, uh, she uh, tagged her her friends, uh, uh, Darren Mason, and said, "We are one to watch." There you go, one to watch. I, I, I like that. I like. Yes. <laughs> I do. I do like that indeed. Now uh, we're starting off this this week. Uh, we're going to talk about water this week, but uh, you've got some exciting exciting news uh, that you're going to be taking part in Belfast Whiskey Week. When's that going to be? Ah, uh, well, it's um. It's about 45 days away, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I got a phone call from Paul this week just asking. He's the organiser. He's the guy who organises it. And uh, just, it's the biggest whiskey festival now in in Ireland. And he asked me would I do one of the whiskey tastings, the online tastings. So no more details than that. So just keep an eye. It's on Facebook. I'll be promoting it on the, the Ulster Whiskey page, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So just let me know, okay? Okay. So, uh, listen. What's this big deal with water then? What 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 is this big deal with water? Right, as you well know, water is vital for life. Okay, and whiskey's name comes from the water of life. So it's Ushkaba in in Gaelic, and Ushka being uh, Irish or Gaelic for water. Now, when people talk about the elements of whiskey and what makes it important, mainly what they end up talking about is cask finishes. They'll, they'll talk about how it's finished in cask, which imparts a huge part of the flavour. But the actual distillate, the actual, when it's run through the copper stills, is kind of vital that they have the right water. Now, You'll notice that pretty much every um, distillery is located near a body of water, and quite a lot of them promote it. Um, they, they talk about how clean their water is, uh, how uh, the history of the water and the purity of the water, uh, and it's kind of used as a very, a very much a, a sort of marketing ploy. There's lots of uh, versions of whiskies that certainly come out that allude to where they're from. Uh, a good example would be Speyside up in, in Scotland. About half of the whisky produced in Scotland comes from the Speyside River, the River Spey. And the reason being that the water up there is seen as being pretty much perfect to, to make your whisky. So what, what qualities does it have that make it perfect? Well, it's kind of the mineral makeup of it. Uh, certain compounds that you would find in whiskies impart certain different flavors uh, into the, the into the, the distillate into, into the, the spirit um, so you have the water is key from the very start but but water's ph is is, is seven it, how, how can it affect it so much if it's just a, a neutral thing well it's not the water's ph uh, that's for distilled pure water. So if you get something in your eye, Justin, that's the water you need. But if you <laughs> <laughs> whiskey's supposed to be in the jar, Marty. <laughs> if you take um, the likes of uh, Isla, the island of Isla, you would have uh, the peat uh, whiskey or peat water. Sorry, the water is going down through peat, so its pH is actually higher than seven. It will be not much higher, but it, it has that um, acidity to it. Conversely, if you were to make whiskey uh, down here in Glen Arm, where there's a limestone quarry, the, the, the pH would be lower because it's going through limestone. So it, it's this mineralogy. So if you have limestone, it tends to lead to slightly lighter flavours, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Iron compounds, if it's going through uh, sort of iron areas, will make probably bad tasting whiskey because it's just the minerals in it will react and and that's what will come out so water is probably the most important 
element. You can't ship water, for example, from from England, the south of England, up to Scotland. It has to be on site, more or less. So, the, for example, uh, the barley. A lot of people don't realise that that the barley. Some people don't actually understand what malt is. What a malt is, and malt water is important for that too, because to malt barley, you have to you have you have to trick it. You have to wet it and trick it into sprouting a little spiral, that's what it's called, and bringing out those sugars. Now, there's not very many distilleries that do uh, maltings at their own malting anymore. Um, I lifted this wonderful substance, Springbank. This is in Campbelltown. And they yeah, still yeah. malt their own barley uh, on site. But Dunville's, they have it as well, but they're new mix spirits not out just yet. Um, so in terms of production, it's not just the water that goes into to, to the mash to make the whiskey. It's vital in every stage along the way. So when you're malting the whiskey, you need water. Okay. Um, the next stage of the production is when you make up the mash bill. Basically, what you do is you put your green mash in. So it could be wheat or um it's mainly all barley, but you'll have wheat or oats or whatever in it as well. You then need to wet that to add the yeast to allow the, the, the reactions to take place, uh, to, to allow that fermenting to take place and to get you your, your, your beer, essentially, your wort before it goes in for the distillation. So, again, you have to, uh, you have, to have the water supply. Okay? So... Then, when it goes through the distillation process, it comes out of this the still. Now, I'm talking about the the copper pot stills, the the, the one the, the little decorative ones rather than the, the the tall column stills. When it comes out of that, it's about seventy percent alcohol, okay, or thereabouts. So before they put it in a cask, they actually water it down slightly. Basically, basically because if it goes in at seventy percent, it's too high. The alcohol is too high. Um, it, it, they lost two percent of it anyway, two two three percent, based on that. So what they do is they water it down because they reckon it doesn't really change much and it gives you a bit more volume and it stops a little bit of the evaporation as well. So it goes into in the cask about sixty four percent normally there or thereabouts, and uh, as it goes in, so it has to have water added at that point pretty much all the time. So again, there's more water being added to it. So it goes in, it's then aged, and when it goes it goes through the aging process, it takes on all of these flavours and all of these cask finishes, which do contribute the majority of the, 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 the flavour profile at the end. But it's where you start so if you start, for example, with a peaty whiskey or, or or peaty water, you know, sort of high higher pH water, right? What you tend to get is that briny sea salt taste. There's a some people say it tastes like like iodine or you know that kind of you know this kind of sort of chemical flavor, brine like dulse. If you've ever had seaweed from down these parts, um, that kind of flavor. Now, if it's, um, say, Speyside, it doesn't have that briny taste. It kind of has a much lighter, fruitier note, so a bit more clean, clear cut. Uh, Campbelltown, where this is from, and the water up there mainly comes from the lochs, just sitting above it, and it tends to impart sort of creamy, um, like a full body kind of texture, mouthfeel to the, to the thing. So water is really vital um I have now, can, this. I, can i nip back can i nip the, back the, the the last week's morty because uh jonathan mm -hmm. mcculloch has posed a question how does the water that's in it in the first place uh affect the factors of the different styles of whiskey like single malt single pot still single cast because jonathan mcculloch has asked uh what is pure pot pot Irish whiskey. How how does the water differ differ in, in that product? Well, pot pot still pot stills 
what's the mash bill? It's a mix of malted and unmalted barley. So the water being used will be the same. And this is where you get your sort of dis distillery signature tastes. And a lot of that will come from where the water is, is cited. So that, that's kind of why you have different regions of, of uh, whiskey regions in Scotland. So Speyside is a, is a distinct whiskey region in its own right. It's comes The water comes from the River Spey. Isla, Isla's basically covered in peat bog. So all of the water that comes out of it kind of has that, that peatiness to it, kind of high pH. Um, then Campbelltown, the water sources are pretty much all the same, as far as I know. Uh, so you'll get a, a part part of that. So the, the actual styles of whiskey are are slightly different. The water that they use will be pretty much the same in all the production that they'll do, you know? Right. Okay. Yeah. So where 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 because because the experts say you should add a, a bit of water. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that a little bit later on, Justin. We'll get to that okay. a little bit later on. I want to clear up a little thing about this Bushmills because everyone thinks Bushmills takes its water from the River Bush, but it doesn't. It takes its water from a little stream called St Columns Rill which runs through the distillery into the river bush. It doesn't take you're, it from... You're spoiling my joke on tour, Marty. You're spoiling my joke on tour. <laughs> Fire away. That's not be good. <laughs> I, I, always say, I always say, you know, what makes the water brown? <laughs> and it ain't the peat. <laughs> <laughs> well... I don't, I, 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 I'm sorry for shattering your. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shall try and comfort myself. How, how will I comfort myself after after hearing jokes like that? I think they deserve a drink. It's a crap joke, but it works. It works. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I, th I think I'll, I think I'll join you. Good man. Right. This is that is fifty four point eight percent. So fifty four point eight percent. So this is a cask strength whiskey, okay? This is cask strength. Now, before whiskies are bottled, this is 40% and this is 54.8, okay? Now, by law, whiskey has to be 40% and above, okay? That's a legal requirement. So after it's been in a cask for so long, it may be down to, I don't know, say 50% uh, from the original being 65, 64% cask. So what happens is they water it down and they water it down until it gets to 40%. And that gives them more volume. It gives them all, all of the, meets all the legal requirements. So it gives them all the volume, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret about Middleton and Jameson. Jameson um, use three different water sources in their production. Okay, They use, to distill, they use the Dungurney River, which runs right beside it. Okay, In order to cool their, their stills and to cool the, 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 in the production, they use an aquifer that's right in below the distillery. But then to water it down, because of legal requirements, and this is pretty much very good for, for nearly all soft drinks, they basically use tap water or something very similar to water it down to your 40%. They'll use basically a municipal supply. So they'll use the water that basically the public use, and they'll, they'll take it down. It's perfectly, I mean, it's perfectly acceptable, perfectly legitimate thing to be doing. But uh, it's why sometimes I, I find people get a little bit strange when they say oh i don't put water in my whiskey i don't buy expensive whiskies to put like tap water or bottled water in it um the, lots of them already have this done you know <laughs> so they do it for you okay so they three different water sources but, but does that mean that uh, that it should be just left as it comes out of the bottle then no this is 54.8. The human body is not designed to drink alcohol at that level. Okay? It's just not. So, with fat, you need to add a little bit of water. Okay? 
Now, this is science, Justin. This is science, son, all right? <laughs> I have a pipe here. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to pour this water into a little jug. And what normally, this is what people normally end up with, these little jugs. And you see them going and pouring it all in. Now, this is a five millimeter pipette, okay? This is a teaspoon, does exactly the same job. Okay, this is five millimeter, but five milliliters. And really, what you would want to do with that is add in about a teaspoon and a half into that. Don't overdo it. And, uh, and that, that will give you, I'll drop it down. Okay, now we're going to do science here, Justin, and I've even got diagrams done. I've even, I've even done diagrams and maths for tonight. I've done prep work for tonight, okay? Have you? Pe pe people will be getting suspicious of us now. No, people will think we've done pre preparation and everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, lovely, lovely. Now, there was two scientists a few couple of years ago, uh, two Swedish scientists from the Linnaeus University over in Sweden. And they did some computer simulations. And um, what they did was they analysed the chemical makeup of, of whiskey. And um, what they discovered was that uh, ethanol has, apparently, I'm no chemist, and you'll see that I'm not much of a mathematician either. <laughs> um, what they discovered was that ethanol has a chemical ending, if you like, of a uh, hydrogen and an oxygen molecule. But so has some other the chemicals that are in whiskey. And one of them is called glycol. glycol. And what they found was that there was a very weak attraction between the two, um, between ethanol and, and this glycol compound at, at um, higher ABVs. So what was happening was the alcohol was, was basically binding it up a little bit. So what they recommended was that you bring your whiskey down to less than 40%, ideally around 30, okay? So about 30%. Now, give you an idea of what that is. If you had a 40% whiskey, you would need to put in a 35 mill milliliter uh, shot of it, you would need to put in about two teaspoonfuls of water to bring it down to where they reckon that they think on the whole, whiskey really opens itself up. That's what we call, that's what we term that. We open it up. Is is that accurate? Is that accurate? Two not, teaspoons. Not to my taste. No, uh, forty percent. I could drink forty percent neat for most whiskies, possibly a one teaspoon. But in the interests of science and mathematics, Justin, we have done a chart. <laughs> oh, hold, hold on, hold it, hold it close there, hold it close there. Right. Yep. I think okay. everybody's seen that. So you'll be able to pause it this. later. Thirty-five mil shot at forty percent gives you fourteen milliliters of alcohol. Okay, right. If you add five milliliters of water, it takes the ABV down to about thirty-five percent. Okay, okay. Then if you add another ten milliliters, another five milliliters, that takes you down. That's ten milliliters total. That takes it down to 31% ABB. So this is like the Swedish scientists. Uh, that's what they say. And this is this is not, uh, what do you call that, Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah? Oh, splash. You know the Swedish scientists. Okay. <laughs> listen, listen, Peter McKay has just said, Swedish scientists in Sweden, Marty, who'd have thunk it? Mm. <laughs> uh, Our universities take in talent from all over the world. These are two actual Swedes, Swedes working in a Swedish university. All right. Can, 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 I, can I do the voice? Can I do the voice? If you must. I'm, give me, I have to pour another drink. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I'm going to do the voice. Are, are, are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. I'm going, I'm, going to, I'm going to... This is this is what I do. Now, if you're Norwegian, Swedish, Finnish, or from Iceland, or from Denmark, do not be offended by this. All right? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Helgamiga Algo Eagle. How is that? <laughs> Have another drink, 
<laughs> I thought it was pretty good. What did you think, Jonathan? Jonathan, Peter, what did you think of that? That's my my Swedish version. Uh, now we've we've had another question from Jonathan McCulloch. He okay. he he want he wants he's getting technical. And he now we're talking about water tonight. Remember water and its role in all aspects of whis whiskey before and after. So uh, in the makeup of whiskey. What's the difference between an Irish whiskey and a Scottish whiskey, apart from the E? There isn't even a difference in the E because Ockentoshin um, is, is a triple distilled whiskey. Over here, if you look at some of the old whiskey mirrors, they, they, they don't spell whiskey with an E. Uh, there's a few technical dif differences. The biggest one, the biggest legal requirement between the two is that. Scottish whisky has to be produced and aged totally in Scotland, and Irish whisky has to be uh, produced totally in Ireland, uh, and that's north, south, whatever. So there are a couple of little minor differences. Um, one of them is that Scottish whisky has to be aged totally in oak casks. Irish whisky is a little bit different in that it just has to be a wooden cask. So there's there is no massive difference. Um, there's just a few minor differences. And anything, anything specifically to do with water, seeing as we're on water tonight, that you can think of? No. There's no difference in the water. The water, uh, by law, has to be 40%, so the water has to be watered down. They can use whatever water they like. So. There you there you go. Uh, remember yeah. tonight, if you want to ask Marty a question at any time, make sure you go to the main site, which obviously is in the link. Uh, above it's the, the live site so as you can go through to uh, Irish Whiskey Review ulsterwhiskey.com uh, uh, which is the Facebook uh, page uh, and the internet page you can find us there o always comment like and share the main video and uh, that way you can get involved with the show uh, now uh, we're obviously talking about t t tonight this week uh, you do a bit of a blog on your ulsterwhiskey.com site and if you if you look at this thing here it looks like gibberish right but if you click it it will take you to uh, marty's uh, uh, sort of newsletter which he's going to get around to uh, sending out directly to you so we'll we'll show you that how that works later on but it is in the comments there and if you click it you will be able to sign up to the newsletter so do that tonight i get you roped into these things marty don't you love it really yes you do anyway <laughs> anything for a quiet life nothing for a quiet life <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go all Rachel Riley on you here. This is going to become like like maths, okay? Proper maths. Division okay. and, and subtraction and everything's all on paper here. I'm going to show you this. Now, this wonderful substance is from the Cologne Distillery. Down in County Down, down in the Kingdom of Morn. Now, this is the Chicolina cask finish. Now, I think I mentioned this, I think possibly on week one. Um... This this is a whiskey aged in in uh, uh, Basque country wine casks, but used to store wine casks. But the reason I have this is this is a cask strength, okay? So it's fifty five point seven five percent alcohol, okay? And um, it's tasty stuff, right? But it's a very light whiskey. You know, it's it, it's not really heavy and and. and oily and so on and so forth. If you drink it uh, straight out of this bottle, you're really not doing it justice, okay? It needs water, and it needs quite a lot of it. So I've done the maths, and to get this down to 40%, you need to add... Now, mathematics. I'm like Carl Vorderman off Countdown. Okay? <laughs> so you need to add... You have 35 ml shot as 19.5 milliliters of alcohol in it, okay? So to take it down to 40%, 9.5 divided 4 times 10, uh, you need 48.75 milliliters of liquid. So 48 liquid minus 35 already in, you need 13.75 milliliters of water in that to take it down to the legal requirement for whiskey, to take it down to your 40%. So really, what you need to put in that to take it down to the 40% is about two and three quarter teaspoons of water, okay? Which is 
an awful lot, and that's just to get that down to the forty percent. So that, I have that's nearly a, th a that's nearly a third shot of this, and I'm going to put in one. Now, when you put it in, you get to see all the all the sort of parting, the 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 the, the, the oil is all starting to open up. So yeah, two. And there's about half, about half three quarters. And you let that sit for a little bit. Give that smart. So that's it down just to 40%. Okay. Now that's nearly uh, a third more than the two teaspoons full she told us about about uh, 10 minutes ago. Yeah. But this is just taking it down to 40%. Right. right. In order to take it down to where the, 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 the sweet. Swedish scientists are recommending that it needs to be, and to be honest, I think that needs to be less than 40% because the, the, the flavour of it is really quite light and quite delicate. And without it, I mean, even at that, you're still getting a bit too much alcohol coming off it to, to, to mask over the, the, the sort of more subtle, more, more complicated aromas that you should be getting from it. And it, it's I mean, it's really nice, and it, this is one of the joys of doing something like this. You can play about with it. This this bottle is is eighty pounds for a half bottle. Okay, now there's only four hundred and ninety of these in existence. It it should be treated with a bit of respect. It should be treated and played about with, and and you know, do this kind of thing with it. You know, I know it's a bit nerdish to sit and work out all of this. You don't have to do any of that. But take a teaspoon of water, try it, sip it, maybe too much alcohol, another little bit of water, and do it slightly in increments and, and really play about with it and give it the respect that it really deserves, you know. So to take it down to the 30%, you, you need to start adding in a little bit more again. So you need to add in another couple of teaspoons of water. And that takes it down. And that's really where that needs to be. So now we've had five teaspoons of water essentially in that. So if you take it, we start it off with 35 ml. We've added another 25 milliliters to take it down to where it's really, really hitting its mark. So you've, you've put another 25 ml in it. Now you're up, you have 60 milliliters of liquid in here. So you're almost doubling it. So if you think about it, you're getting a really, really good quality whiskey. Now this might seem very expensive, but to get it to where it really needs to be, you need to add water to it. And you're actually doubling this to, to basically a full-size bottle of really good quality spirit. So yeah. It's a bit like dilutable orange, this. <laughs> Kiora. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Brendan down in Cologne would be brave and happy with <laughs> this stuff. No, he, he, he's probably got my, he's probably got my name and number. Uh, now, li listen, uh, we're okay. nearly halfway through the show already tonight. I don't know how it goes so quick because I'm I'm sitting here. The weeks do go, go quick in lockdown. I mean, and we are getting out to do things. I, I went canoeing this week. Uh, you went for a lovely walk up around uh, Game of Thrones, Murdoch Bay, did you? Yeah, me me and my friend the Croc Man Don McEwen went up for. Uh... A, a, a um, yeah, it was, it was beautiful. It was really, really nice. Um, just took ourselves out and went up there and had a, had a walk around and a chat because it, it's amazing the difference meeting people again. You know, it's just, oh, it's it's a bit of a relief, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that human contact again. And unfortunately, the bars aren't open. Um, the two bars down and down here in Glenarm, the neither of them are open. Um, and this is this is where all of this comes in again. It's the social contact. You know, you get to sit down, have a whiskey, and meet up with guys who um, enjoy enjoy a, a half one as well. You know, so yeah. I, I I don't know whether I've told this story before, but uh, many years ago when I first learned to drive, uh, I said to my grandfather, and he he, he wasn't driving at that point because he'd had a heart attack, yeah. uh, and he, and he, and I said, would you like to go out a wee run on the car? And we got uh, down to Glenarm, and as you know, it's it's about forty five minutes from where I live, and you, you need a pee stop by that point, don't you? You know, <laughs> so we pulled we pulled up, 
uh, just up near the the bridge there. Uh -huh. And I, I said, I said to my grandfather, uh, "Would you like a drink?" And I got out of the car, uh, walked across the road uh, into the shop, which was down near the the T junction there, there uh, at the bridge. Uh, I went into the shop and I bought two bottles of Lucasade. Okay. And when I walked back over to the car again, my grandfather was nowhere to be seen. Right. Do, you know where, do you know where my grandfather had gone? The, the Bridge End Tavern, by chance? No. Yes, you're exactly right. I, I wondered where he'd gone until I went into the pub and says, and he was, he was, he was, he was there. He was there having a wee, a wee tram. He was, he was. Now, listen, we've got some great questions tonight. Okay. Now, uh, this this goes back to water. Uh, and, and you said, don't transfer. And I am adding this on, but I'll show you this. Trevor Wilson said, will whiskey get better in the bottle? Now, you said that you shouldn't transfer the whiskey into a carafe, remember? Uh, yeah. It's better in the bottle. So if it's in the bottle, and you, you remember you said it had to be full to the, the neck, right? It won't evaporate. But if it if it did evaporate, that meant that the water would have, no that meant the whiskey would the alcohol would have left it and there would be more water in it. So yeah. that would mean whiskey technically might get better in the bottle. No, no, it doesn't. Because I'm wrong again. Basically, basically, so long as the whiskey properly sealed, it, it'll not change chemically because ethanol and and water are not far apart chemically. Now, I'm not, I'm not a chemist or even a distiller, but chemically they don't separate, okay? So the, the, the whiskey in the bottle should stay, so long as it's sealed. The problem is if it's got a little, and it can be microscopic, um, any sort of leakage, because you can keep it so long, it'll, it will leak alcohol, and it'll start to change its flavor profile and if you have it a very long time it, 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 it can it can really 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 change especially if you have sort of the heavier peated ones it'll lose its peatiness i don't even pass a word but peatiness um and that's 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 a danger of having uh, a bottle but it won't change it won't get better in a, in a bottle that's not how it works now, I know we've still have quite a lot to get through tonight, but uh, Sean O'Neill was uh, asking about pot still a while back. Uh, uh, remember, we're talking about water tonight, Sean. Uh, we, I'm trying to think back into context what we were talking about with the pot still, because we were asked about that earlier on. Uh, does it being pot still, is the water a big factor in the difference in pot still? Water is always a huge factor in, in no matter what style of whiskey you're using, what style of whiskey you're trying to produce. Um, it used to be in Dublin. They they tried to use water from, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the two rivers that they, they, they wanted because it was so, the water in them was, was deemed to be uh, was better. Uh, the, the, the Farty River. Um, which kind of comes from from the Wicklow direction. Uh, that was the, that was said they be have the best best water for making whiskey. Um, it does make a huge difference. Uh, the, the, they used to have a distillery in Hillsborough, up, up Hillsborough Castle, and the, the there was a little river that ran between uh, Kilkevy and and Hillsborough, and it was known as the Whiskey River because the, the water wow. that it, the water that it brought out was said to be perfect for making the style of whiskey that they, they, they wanted to make. You wouldn't make a pot still whiskey with a very heavily peated water. It wouldn't necessarily work because pot still tends to have be, be triple distilled fairly light uh, and and have, have a slightly peppery finish. Whereas if you're going through heavily peated water, it would tend to have be uh, a bit more briny and more chemically, so you'd have this sort of disconnect between the the, the style of whiskey you're making and the, the water to start off with. It's not, I mean, it's an awful lot more complicated than that. But as a general rule of thumb, 
you wouldn't necessarily want to heavily peat it water to make uh, pot style whiskey. Bush mills don't don't make pot style whiskey. Right, right. Sh Sean's still watching. He's qualified the question, right? Uh, now, remember, you went through the differences between the Scottish and Irish whiskies, but he was asking specifically, is there a difference between pot stilled Scottish and Irish whiskey? Ah, right. Well, Scotland can't make pot stilled whiskey. That's against that. Is they can't make it because pot stilled whiskey is unique to Ireland. It has to be made in Ireland. New Zealand tried to make it and claim it was pot style whiskey, and they can't. It's a protected geographical indication. Uh, so it's, it's like champagne, you know, other countries can make, like Asti Spamonti or, you know, some, something like that, but they can't call it champagne. So pot style whiskey tends to, tends to be, pot style whiskey triple distilled, and Scottish whiskeys tend to be double distilled. But that's not a legal requirement. Right. I'm with you. Okay. Now we're we're uh, we've got quite a lot to to go, do tonight, but we've got a lot of questions tonight, Marty, and I do feel that we need to do them at this point in time. Otherwise, we will run out. Okay. So, because okay. because I hate to cut you off sort of midstream, but it gives you it gives you a wee break to to uh, sort of have a have have a go, <laughs> right? Uh, we're, 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 there's a bit of industrial espionage going on here. Here's uh, Sean O'Neill is saying, uh, hearing it is being made in the USA. The pot stilled. Yeah, you see, there's lot, lots of lots of pot stilled. Basically, is what's remember I told you about the mash bill. It's the the, the mash bill is essentially what the pot stilled requirement is. You are allowed. Um, it has to be. So it has to have malted and unmalted barley in it, and but it can have some other cereals, so it could possibly have oats and wheat and stuff in it. Other countries can make that. There's nothing stopping anybody from making that, but they can't call it pot still whiskey. You know, they can't, they can't, they can't use that term because uh, that's it's it's like calling something champagne or or uh, Parma ham. It's, you know, you, you can't make Parma ham and Carrick Fergus. You can do the same process, but you can't make it. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. So, 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 it, it, but somebody could come up with a, a four times distilled thing, and and then then they could call it better than pot stilled, couldn't they? The problem is that there used to be years ago a a, a spirit that was four times distilled, uh, and its name leaves me now. But it was basically whiskey, but it was distilled four triple or quadruple distilled, and apparently it was just pure fire water. <laughs> 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 It's like it's like hand sanitizer, you know. <laughs> uh, right, uh, we're we're coming up on the two thirds mark, but I want to fit these in because they are relevant, and they will get you back on track on the water track. So okay. Julie Ma Julie Mason is saying, learning a lot about the importance of water and the ABV of whiskey. A teaspoon of water can make a very nice difference. Okay, thanks for that, Julie. Julie Julie must have watched this every week, four weeks in a row. This yes, is, this is. It's becoming nearly as good as normal people on Hulu, isn't it? It's it's good this show. Uh, now getting you back on the track. Now this sort of gets on the water thing. Now it is possible to add water that isn't water, ice. Now Little Wolf Chateau. How much difference do you feel adding ice to whiskey makes versus just adding water? Do uh, you ever use whiskey stones? I do you throw at people that have bought them too. Bought them. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh. I, I actually have whiskey stones sitting sitting somewhere. I um someone bought bought me them. Um I used them I used them in cooking because <laughs> they're actually quite heavy. And I used to be holding something down. I can't remember what it was. But uh no that, It wasn't a body, was it? No. No, 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 because they're, they're really small cubes. They're like, All right. they're like really small uh, ice cube things. And what the idea of whiskey stones are, you freeze them essentially and then drop them in, and it doesn't impart water into it, just cools your whis whiskey. Excuse me, sorry. Um, ice, ice baby. Uh, well, <laughs> I have a whiskey that possibly <laughs> you wouldn't put ice into. <laughs> okay, Titanic. I knew I was going to be asked about ice. Um, I don't like particularly chilled drinks. I don't think 
they they work. If it's a hot day and you have a chilled cider or a chilled lager or something, fair enough. When you put ice into the whiskey, it really sort of you have no real control over how much water you have in it. If you understand what I mean, it if you put too much ice in it, it just I mean it just ruins the whole thing. If you cool it down, I always find that when you're 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 drinking something that's too cold, it affects your palate, and it can take a while for your palate to actually warm back up again, and and it becomes it becomes really something different. Now, if you put ice in as it melts, if you drink it while it's melting, the flavour of it totally changes, and the balances of it go way out. You've no real idea of what percentage of alcohol you're actually drinking either, so you have no real standard by which to, to 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 mark the thing if you know what I mean. So I I never take ice and whiskey. I just don't. Um, I I don't. Probably some whiskeys you possibly could drop an ice cube in, but I don't tend to do it because I I don't think you have any real uh, control over what it tastes because. By the time it melts, then what's the point of putting an ice cube in? Do you know what you understand what I'm saying? I'm with you. Now, an awful lot of people have thought long and hard about this water and whiskey <laughs> thing. They have, Marty, okay. because the question, this is the best week for intelligent questions. Like, these are really, they, so, I mean, you got the miles out and they, they, they have surpassed you, right? Now, what do you, what do you, what do you hear this one, right? Right? Okay. Now, uh, right. This is superb. And this comes from Julie Mason again. Kilcarran, a peated whiskey from Campbelltown, is at sixty point nine percent, but is in, is quite enjoyable without water. Could this be because of the creaminess of the water from this area? Ah, uh, no. At sixty point nine percent, it's it's massive. I mean, that's P E P E. That's sorry, not P. -E, that's Massive alcohol. Kilkieran is a, a sister distillery of this. It's owned by the same people. It's right beside each. It's right beside each other. Um, there's probably a number of factors in there. Uh, the the fact that it has a, a fantastic mouthfeel. That oily. That I've talked about this before. That oily mouthfeel that goes around and makes it just tastes of quality. Um, the peatiness will add another flavour. So it's kind of masking. The, the 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 massive amount of alcohol. I would suggest don't be drinking at that level. Neat. Um, I would pour out a reasonable sized measure, thirty five ml measure, and by all means, it's, it's a, again, it's always going to be exactly the same. It's entirely up to to the individual. If you think it's if that's what it it's good at, that's what it's good at. Okay. Um, but I would experiment with it. Try a teaspoon of water, a couple of teaspoons of water in it. Take it down. It wouldn't need to be treated the same way as this, because this is a very light finished whiskey. It's it, it's really nice, but it's light and fruity. So it needs the the, the, the alcohol is too high. It needs to drop down with the Kilkeran. I, I would probably try it with a couple of teaspoons of water. Kilkeran's lovely, by the way. I don't have a bottle of it at the minute, but it's, it's magnificent. That's a good sign, isn't it? Of always. Now, uh, we'll say hi to Connor, and F Connor Farrell tonight. I thought it was Colin Farrell there for a minute. Uh, hi to Rodney Quigley. Uh, hi to Michael McDowell. Hi to Grant Erskine. Hi to uh, Michael Higgins as well. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, if you want to comment, like, and share, do show on the main feed, uh, which is ulsterwhiskey.com's Facebook page, Irish Whiskey Review. Dead easy to find. Now, I'm going to show you this in the stream. This is where you can sign up to Marty's uh, sort of newsletter which is going to come out uh, uh well maybe a few times a year this is ulsterwhiskey.com newsletter the uh sort of where to find it is that big long newsletter yeah that big gobbledygooky thing there over there on the side this gobbledygooky thing that's what it looks like there but that if you click that that will take you to that you can enter your email in there and then yeah, we folks, can send you i'll be doing a newsletter uh, I, I also write for the Sunday Life as well, so I will have a review in next week.
And we seem to have uh, lost Marty there. He'll uh, join us again. I'll get him to sign back in again. And, uh, of course, we uh, have got uh, the uh, Belfast Whiskey Week is coming up as well. And Belfast Whiskey Week, uh, you can get involved with Belfast Whiskey Week by going to uh, this link here on uh, uh, Eventbrite. Uh, so that's Belfast Whiskey Week. And uh, you can find out full details there. I'll just see where Marty has uh, popped off to. Uh, I'll get him to sign back in. We are on Cottage Edge Internet today, as always, and we'll get him to sign back in. So this is the weekly uh, sort of ulsterwhiskey.com uh, sort of uh, live uh, podcast. And this is Water and its Role in Whiskey. Uh, so we're just waiting for Marty to join us again. And we're getting some other good questions in tonight, uh, which Marty will answer very, very shortly. If you want to go along to the uh, Belfast uh, Whiskey Week, they're doing a global international whiskey tasting, and this is where you get tickets here. I'm just going to check to see where Marty has gone to, and we'll hopefully get him back. He's on the mobile uh, Wi-Fi away down there in Glenarm because it's away up the Antrim coast and it is very, very, very uh, difficult for him to get uh, proper Wi-Fi signal. We'll just see where he is, get him to sign back in again. Oh, here he is. He's back again. Hello, Ma hello, Marty. How are you? Welcome uh, back. Technical problems. Technical problems. You're back. You're back in the room there. I yeah. think the internet might have just glitched for a few moments there. I was just telling them about the uh, the global tasting that uh, the Belfast Whiskey Week is uh, going to do. Yeah, I, to be honest, I, I I know bits and pieces about it. Uh, it, it it's um, we'll it's, go in more depth as it gets closer to the time. But like I said, I'm not a hundred percent sure just what I'm doing just yet. Um, as I say, there's there's stuff that's available. Uh, it was only launched the other day, um, so it'll be uh, more details have come out. As, if you want to check out the Belfast uh, Whiskey Week page, you can find that there. Too, so. Yeah. So uh, where were we before uh, it glitched there, and uh, we can head back now. Sean O'Neill had said there he had said Irish tech file. Uh, uh, is not allowing Kill Owen to call their whiskey pot stilled mm. due to the mix they're using, even yeah. though it's made in a pot still. No, no, a bit about that, Marty. I do. I was down with Brendan. Um, the, the, they have set up a very sort of narrow set of parameters for Brendan. By the way, is the uh, the head distiller down in Kill Owen. And if you ever get a chance, go go and visit these places because it makes the whiskey. An awful lot better when you know and how it's made and stuff. Um, they have very sort of narrow parameters as to what the mash bill uh, is allowed to be for pot still. Now, this is how it was drawn up. Um, there's some some argument uh, some argument about how it was drawn up, and probably fair enough. So there's a very sort of narrow amount of you're only allowed to use a certain percentage of other cereals, I think it's 5%. So, Brendan and the guys down there, they're, they know they're making up more historic uh, pot still mixes that use malted and unmalted barley and higher percentages of oats and, and this kind of thing. So, it doesn't fall within the tech file of, of pot still whiskey under the, under the PGA brand. So, or under the PGA parameters so they are uh yeah they're they're, they're... <laughs> listen we've got some comedians again tonight marty we've got, we've got about 10 minutes left i know you've got a wee bit more to do but we'll do these before we get to the end uh trevor watson he says hi from fermanna lakelands who would have thought water was so interesting it's like watching paint try this show tonight although we are getting a lot of a lot of interactions tonight and a lot of viewers around the world uh and dom mckeown says um <laughs> How many of oh look is is he's got his, his thongs on there? Dominic says, How many mistake. of those 60 percent would you need to go home way over fifteen stone? 
I tell you, there's some comedians. There are some co man we killed. Do you know that that man, that man has become the the defender of the people of Balamina. You can go and see this on YouTube. He has now volunteered for about the last ten years to uh, police Balamina to prevent crocodile attacks. And since he's done it, there hasn't been a single crocodile attack on anyone in Balamina in the last ten years. I mean, I think that deserves a round of applause. Is 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 this actually true, Marty? Is is this true? Is it? Because I'm going to I'm going to Google this. It's on YouTube, so it must be true. <laughs> right. Well, how do I find it on YouTube? If you go, if you, if you Google, um, uh, I think I think it's Crook Man at the Ecos Centre in Balamina. Man at. Ecos Center at Ecos Center because I've been to the e e Ecos Center and it does look like the sort of place you might find a crocodile if you were actually out in uh, Florida. I can't find it. Can't find it at all. I can find I can find that croc man that, from Australia, but I can't find the croc man thing. But anyway, listen, we've got ten minutes left. Tell okay. us more about water. Tell us more about water. Um, this, after after the ice. Um, the Ice and whiskey and water and whiskey and so on and so forth. Again, it's always down to your personal preference, okay? Um, the styles of whiskey that kind of take water better than, than others is more, more your lighter ones. If you have a massive, big, what we call peat monsters, right? so the likes of your your, your Lefroig and, and Kilkiran and that kind of stuff, um, they don't need an awful lot of water necessarily because they're quite in your face and supposed to be sort of punchy and bang. And, and if you water them down, you're... these are all sort of rules of thumb. They're not, they're not hard and fast rules. So if you put too much water in them, they kind of lost their, their, their sort of bang, you know, your, your, your punchiness. Your lighter whiskies, you're trying to detect some of the more delicate flavors the, 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 when it's on the nose all this kind of stuff so you kind of want the, the the alcohol to take a bit of a back seat if there's too much alcohol it punches you in the nose and and really you're you're, you're not having it at its premium at its best you know so again it's personal preference but don't over water it that's the big problem if you over put too much water in it it's just horrendous. It just takes away it totally and utterly, and just ruins the thing. Essentially, you know. Okay. Now, uh, in the the last five minutes, uh, I don't think anybody has any more questions. Maybe they do. Uh, mm -hmm. What have we missed about water tonight? What have we not covered that we should have covered so far? Pretty much nailed most of it. Um, it is water is essential to whiskey. It's also essential for life, as we know, because life can't exist without liquid water, and whiskey can't exist without water either. Uh, it, it, it's a vital part of the whole process from start to finish, and you get to dictate what you're, you're, you're doing with it yourself uh, when you get it in a glass. So it's sometimes a little bit overlooked in, in terms of uh, people refer to the cask, and the, the, the water... Is, is vital, okay? What's the difference between uh, water and a mixer? Because wasn't Mountain Dew originally done to be a mixer for whiskey? Lots of, lots of whiskies are made for, for being uh, being mixed with. So so lots of whiskies are done with ginger ale. I mean, the likes of this Bush Mills, this is not really designed to be drunk neat, okay? This is kind of designed to be drunk with, with something. Um it, it, it's not I say not good and bad that's not that's not the, the wrong term it's not a standalone whiskey the likes the likes of this you don't you don't buy this and put ginger ale or, or mountain dew or any of that kind of stuff in that so water and, and your mixers I mean you don't drink a really good whiskey with coke I mean it's just I mean, it's just stupid you, you know you why pay 80, 90, 100 Five hundred, a thousand pound a bottle, and then do some stealing out with it. Yeah. You're basically saying stick with the blended whiskies if you're doing a, if you're doing a, a mixer. Absolutely, it doesn't make a huge difference. But if you're putting a lot of ginger ale or a lot of 
diet coke or something, whatever it is you're going to put in it. Um, so what difference is it going to make really between your your entry level Bush Mills and your your entry level Jameson or whatever? It's not going to make a huge difference. You know? Okay, now Connor Farrell, uh, as I thought it was Colin Farrell for a minute there, he's posed a very, very good question tonight, Morty. And uh, it is, uh, how much does the seawater affect whiskey from coastal distilleries? We know it's distilled with fresh water, but how does the sea influence the flavour? Ah, no, that would be when it's in the cask. Um, it would have a number of different um influences some of them maybe not just noticeable if you have a distillery by the sea well one it will probably tend to be a little bit cooler because of the the, the, the sea breeze coming in and out of 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 the water and the land so it won't evaporate the same where a distillery is located for the aging process uh, in the warehouse for example a lot of that will have an effect over time if it's stored there. If you remember, I talked about one a couple of weeks ago. We talked about how these tiny little differences don't make much difference over a year or two, but over 10 years, 15, 20 years, they have a huge impact, massive impact. So, the distillery being located down by the sea, if they make it where Say, say the likes of Lefroy gets set down by the sea. If you've ever been there, you'll, you'll see that. But if you're in your taste in Lefroy, you will probably pick up a little bit of that briny, iodine, dulcy, you know, that kind of flavour. And that that's really what I'll come from. I can see me going back. If we're allowed to go anywhere this year, that would be a bit as far as I'll go over to Isla. On a, on a calm day. <laughs> now, uh, we have uh, Jonathan McCulloch is asking in the last uh, three minutes of the show, uh, what's your favourite Irish whiskey, Marty, that you would never put water in? Never put water in, not put water in. Uh, my it's, it's kind of hard to say about a favourite whiskey because um, it all depends on your mood. Um, one that I would never put, put water in would be... Let me think. Let me think. Um, I, I probably would not put water in the Dunville's Three Crowns. Um, the reason being, it's very light on its own. It's very, it, it's very sort of tropical fruit. You know, it's got that sort of summery feel to it. And if, where it sits, uh, if I, I think if I put water in it, it would it would take away rather than adding to it. If you know what I mean. So uh, I probably wouldn't put water in Three Crowns. Okay, and uh, Trevor Watson's in. He's saying, uh, "Would you put water in the twelve-year-old Pultney?" Um, old Pultney. Uh, I think I have a bottle of old Pultney sitting in there. Um, probably not. No, I probably wouldn't. Okay, and then Frank Hearn is admitting he's only just joined the show tonight. Frank, where were you? We know you weren't down the pub. Sorry, <laughs> laying in tonight, but it's whiskey, not the water of life. We've already done that. Uh, Frank, uh, we have done all that. Uh, you can watch this and repeat. By the way, you can rewind this at any time if you want. <laughs> if you want to see the man in the thong, that's the croc hunter. Um, and uh, we're getting we're getting more and more women of, of whiskey involved in the show. Claire McDaid says, uh, "Love Isla, you love Isla." There you Good. go. She, she, she might be going a boat trip with me, would she? No problem. Um, <laughs> what what I will say is, one of these weeks I do. Uh, I think about uh, I talk about women in whiskey and just how important they are. I I I I've I've met guys who think women don't know anything about whiskey, so that's just absolute nonsense. They know there's so many um, women have played such a vital role in the whole of whiskey, especially at Lefroy, uh, Betsy Williamson. So um, we'll do we'll do a talk on women in whiskey and uh, we'll, we'll... okay. Uh, uh... 
she, she, Claire's just said she loves whiskey as well. There you go. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We're going to leave you with full detail. Oh, there's more people coming in. Uh, I, I try to get away exactly on time so we don't have to edit this down a bit. Uh, Nick Ryan is saying the vast majority of Isla whiskey is matured in mainland due to the bonded warehouse being in short supply. I know it would sort of ruin the landscape if you if you yeah. built loads of uh, uh, farm sheds there on, on the island. Yeah, I know. We know. We've we've been there um so listen thank you very much for watching tonight marty you've been great this week i mean I, i've got to go back to that one who was it said uh who, who, who somebody says who, who would have thought water was so interesting it was trevor watson there you go i had no idea there's going to be so much to this water in the whiskey yeah oh it's a huge huge thing huge thing all right all right so we'll leave with your details how to get involved with the uh sort of uh, Belfast Whiskey Week at Global Whiskey Tasting, which is coming up. We're going to leave you with that. Marty, say bye-bye. Bye-bye, folks. Take care. Stay safe. All right. I'm going to say bye-bye. And there's the full details. All right. There you go. All the